What is good everybody, welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today we're back with a brand new AEW action figure review on the ringside exclusive Blood and Guts AEW Unrivaled Wheeler Yuta figure. Now this is a figure a lot of people are looking forward to and it's kind of insane because we don't even have a regular version of Wheeler Yuta. So to get this Blood and Guts version before we actually get a regular Wheeler Yuta is kind of insane, but you guys can let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. And I've never been the craziest Wheeler Yuta fan, but he is a tough son of a gun and he looks like a kid that I grew up with. So that's always what kind of pops in my head every time I look at him, but I'm excited about the figure. I'm excited to have him in the collection, a unique character to the line, somebody we have not seen before, like I said. So it should be a fun one, man, but if you guys want to grab this figure, you already like what you see, go over to Ringside Collectibles, use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, but today we're looking at the Blood and Guts Wheeler Yuta figure. We we know Blood and Guts, it's a ringside staple with the AEW action figures here. You have Ringside Exclusive up there, here's the front viewing window. You know, the packaging always goes pretty damn hard for the Blood and Guts. I mean, it's Blood and Guts, you gotta go hard here, they have blood all over it, you got interchange heads. Ring of Honor Pure Championship first time in the line championship force. Blood and Guts down here. Wheeler Yuta AEW. On the side you get a shot of Wheeler Yuta. On the back you get a shot of Wheeler Yuta and what looks like he has been shot in this image here. Rampage Yuta signature Blood and Guts Wheeler Yuta at the bottom. Nothing really on the side here. Unrivaled Collection and then you do have the same Blood and Guts Wheeler Yuta up top but that is pretty much our packaging for the Wheeler Yuta ringside exclusive so let's shut the hell up crack him out of the packaging find out what he's all about and dive into the figure itself. Alright man, so here's Wheeler Yuta out of the championship. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Out of the packaging, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here's Wheeler Yuta out of the... Jesus Christ, I almost said it again. Here is Wheeler Yuta out of the packaging, and I gotta say, I, I'm enjoying the figure so far. Of course, I do have my things I don't really like about the figure, and of course, you guys are unaware, when I take it out of the packaging, that is when I get my full-fledged review together before I put him on the rotating base, and then I lay out everything else. So I will take the figure out of the packaging and post him around. It's not immediate right there. I think you need some time to move a figure around. You gotta get some time to diagnose the figure and get, you know, just kind of analyze it and explore what you got there. So, so what we're going to do first is dive into the accessories of the Wheeler Yuta, and then we'll run it back and take a closer look at Wheeler Yuta himself. Alright guys, so diving into the Wheeler Yuta's accessories, you do get three interchangeable head sculpts, a championship, and cloth goods. So, I mean, right on par with kind of an ultimate edition, you know, things of that nature when it comes to action figures in the wrestling action figure space. So I usually like to start off with the head sculpts here, because you guys can see here, I think this is a really good likeness to Wheeler Yuta. I think it looks just like the character I see on my television. I like the blood on there. Of of course, the Blood and Guts, it's a bit cartoony. You know, it's not as realistic, but it's still a really cool set and stuff like that. But I think this looks just like Wheeler Yuta. And what's cool about this is not only do you get the bloody version, but you have a non-bloody version. Now, I'm not sure if his next figure comes with this head sculpt or not, but I guess this is for if you wanted to make a non-bloody version and not make it as noticeable because there's blood on the shoes, but there's no blood on the gear. And maybe if you did a torso swap or something, you may could get away with that or I don't know, but I'll look into that later on in the video. But we do have the same head sculpt, one bloody, one non-bloody. And then the third head sculpt is the screaming head sculpt with the blood expression, which I like a lot. I like the expressive. So I don't really mind yelling head sculpts. Everybody says, MDT, you hate yelling head sculpts. It's not really I hate yelling head sculpts. I hate when we have a yelling head sculpt and there's no alternative. So in this case, we have an alternative, so I can appreciate a yelling head sculpt because now we get the best of both worlds. You can have him serious, just stern looking there, or you have the yelling expression, which is also a cool option if he's posing or celebrating or beating the hell out of somebody. Now we also have a look at the Ring of Honor Pure Championship which it obviously can go with a ton of characters. You have a lot of options there. I will say the strap feels a bit stiff in my opinion, but the belt does look good, and I'm glad to add this to our collections here. Really dig the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. I like the red on it. It looks really clean. It fits the figure well, but again, man, that strap is super stiff. I don't know how easy it's going to be to actually plug this onto the figure, but we will see. How I did it in the on the rotating base is I literally like clasped it together, and then like wrapping it around the figure and clasping it is kind of a chore. And now we have kind of the money maker of the set, man. This pleather style like striped jacket here is freaking sweet. It looks great on the figure. It's outstanding. You have the yellow and black going on. You have the collars. You got the collar at the bottom, the collar on the cuffs of the sleeves. I mean, this thing is a beauty. I love this. Now, what's interesting is like when you put this on the figure, it's like he's wearing a jacket, but his torso and everything's covered in blood, so he's going to get blood all over his jacket. But besides that, I mean, it's still a really good piece, and I like it. It's stretchy. You know, it fits the figure well. I will say pull the hands off before you put this on, because it is that stretchy material that you could put a hole in if you're being reckless. But I still like the jacket. Good accessory here. I'm never going to complain about cloth goods. Feels good. Looks like a good jacket, and uh, it's a good jacket. Now, last but not least, we do have some mic holding slash weapon holding style hands that are bloody. So you have the Wheeler Yuta skin tone, and then you do have the bloody, you know, you have the bloody hands here from the blood in the guts. But this will not hold the championship. It doesn't grip the championship well, so it's something to note. And then you have fisted hands. You have 
bloody fists to beat the hell out of people as well. So you get fisted hands and you get mic holding hands or grappling style hands. All right, so diving into the Wheeler figure itself, starting out the head sculpt, I think all of this looks good. Like I said, I think the likeness is definitely there. It looks like the character to me. The blood is going crazy on this, right? The head sculpt's covered in blood. The torso's covered in blood. This does look like a new torso mold to me. Now, one thing that I did notice about the figure for me is I just feel like there's so much separation here. This is like, I don't know, it's very finishing move-esque where like you can see that gap there. And then when he leans back, you get a lot of gappiness here. And this just doesn't feel as tight as I would like. It just feels super, I don't, I don't know about super loose, but it just feels kind of like off-center or like it's not like tight. It doesn't feel secure, I guess. And then the shoulders are like pretty tight. You know, you get that like, they're not as smooth. They're, they are a little bit rickety. You do have all the good articulation here. All this is tightness. You do get these side gauntlets here with the, with the patterns on it and stuff like that. But I don't know. This is probably my least favorite thing about the figure is just how, I don't know, just unsecure all of this feels kind of through this whole unit right here through the middle, which I know kind of sounds crazy, but like that right there, you see I can like kind of pull the arm, like I'm only using the arm right there. I don't like how that's not as crisp as I'd like. Going down to the legs, you do have kind of this like neon style gear where it's like black and it's got the greenish yellow, you got the blue and the red, and then you flip it on the back and it does have Yuda on the back there. And it kind of reminds me of like neon lights or something like that is kind of what it gives me those vibes. But then you do have uh, good articulation here. You have thigh cut, you do have shin cut here, and then you do have no like rotation at the ankle, but you do get the uh, the ankle pivot right here and the shoes look good. You got the straps there. Feet look a little bit big in my opinion, but they still look okay. You got some blood on there and everything like that. I'm not finding any blood on the gear, but there is blood obviously everywhere else. There's none on the gauntlets either. Uh, maybe somebody could have some luck with maybe taking all the blood off. I can't remember what gear the Wheeler Yuta in the Series 15 is in, but I don't think it's this gear, but I could be wrong about that completely. I don't know, but going through everything, man, I mean, it's not a terrible figure, but that unit in the middle, that's really where I'm having the most trouble here, but as far as articulation, like, uh, there's the pop-off, but, like, he still has a good ab crunch here. You know, here's that rickety sound that you're hearing there. You do get the double jointed here. He's got bicep rotation, all the good stuff. His his wrist will hinge and rotate. Uh, head can go all the way down and up because it does have a ball hinge instead of just a regular ball joint. He can do the complete splits. He can kick forward pretty good there. Damn torso popping off. He can kick forward good. You do have the thigh cut there. You have the shin cut, the double jointed knee in there. Not pinless or anything, but then you do have like the ankle pivot there and they go down and up. Now I found that the ankles are pretty damn stiff. May want to work those out a little bit or hit them with a hair dryer or something like that, but I feel like just it's just not a complete unit. It doesn't feel completely togetherness. Like some parts are a little bit looser, some parts are a little bit tighter, and that kind of throws me off when trying to pose the figure, I guess, is the is the main thing that I'm trying to get at. But all in all, it does look like Wheeler Yuta, and I'm appreciating the aesthetic of the figure. I just think some other things could be improved upon it. But with that being said, man, let's go ahead and get into some figure comparisons with our Wheeler Yuta. So for your Wheeler Yuta figure comparisons, here is the Blackpool Combat Club altogether. You have the Elite 93 fix-up Cesaro. We do have the Wheeler Yuta. You have Brian Danielson with the torso swap, and then we do have the unrivaled Series 12 Moxley. And they all look good up next to each other. I think they all scale pretty well. The Cesaro could be a little bit taller, I'll say, but I did fix up his legs just because I wanted to change that out. I felt like his legs were a little bit too jacked there, but we are going to have our own Claudio coming soon, but I, I like the shirt on there. I like All these do look good to each other, right? I mean, even if you do have to make your fix-ups and your, you know, your swippages and swappages, you know, I still think it gets the job done for the most part, and this Wheeler Yuta does fit in nicely. I couldn't really find a torso that I like to switch on there. You know, uh, amongst all the AEW figures that we have, I didn't really find one, at least. I didn't spend a, you know, a huge amount of time on it, but I still feel that there's not really a good torso to switch on there for the Wheeler Yuta to make him look plain. Like, you might be able to use, like, this, uh, this Siri Santana right here. If you were to pop that off and then put this on there. Like, obviously, you gotta do the, you know, the tattoos. You'd have to acetone the tattoos off, but this is probably the closest that you could get, but you're kind of looking at, I don't know, he kind of has, like, a giraffe neck to me a little bit there, and his ab crunch just isn't the best. I mean, it's just, I don't know, I guess if you were doing, like, some photography or just putting him on display, I don't know, you might be able to get away with that if you acetone that off, like, maybe drill out some of the head sculpt or whatever, but, yeah, I guess that's not completely horrible, but that's probably the closest I could get, but you may have a better switch out than me, and this torso, you know, looks different than this. He's a little bit slimmer here, I do believe, unless these, I don't think these are the same torso. Maybe they are, Brad, I don't freaking know, but there you go. I'm trying to give you an option there, and then, you know, if you put the jacket on here, all right, if you're gonna do that, you gotta pull the hands off off, like I said. And there you go. Look at that right there. See how the jacket fits here? And it's not the same torso, but it fits pretty much the same. But yeah, look at that right there. Now look at him. Now look at him all together. So there, there's kind of your aesthetic there. So I, I did my best to try and find the best match for you guys. But if you put that on there, you guys can see the blood's going to be showing through. So I just found that to be a little bit weird. But if you guys want to switch that out again, Santana's probably your best bet. But maybe you can find a better torso option than me. Again, I didn't spend 
spent 100 years on it, but I did look through, and this one looked the best to me. So that is your Wheeler Yuta figure comparisons there. And then for your other Blood and Guts Wheeler Yuta comparison, here is some other Blood and Guts figures. We have the Mox from the Exploding Barbar Deathmatch with Kenny Omega, and then we do have the Blood and Guts Blood Brother. Then we have the Blood and Guts Blood Blood. Then we have the Blood and Guts Blood Brothers, Dustin Rhodes and Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes action figure, two pack figure there with the handprint and everything like that. So just some Blood and Guts figures here. Kenny Omega is over there as well, you know. Looking pretty good here, you know. I think it fits in well to the Blood and Guts collection. I'm I'm looking forward to more Blood and Guts figures. We have Brody King and Darby Allen coming soon, so I, I appreciate it. I like them. So you can, of course, let me know all those things down in the comment section below. But that pretty much wraps up our Blood and Guts figure comparisons. But I think that pretty much wraps up our Blood and Guts ringside exclusive Wheeler Yuta AEW Unrivaled Action Figure Review, man. At the end of the day, I like a lot of the stuff going on with this figure, but at the, at the same time, there are some things that I don't necessarily care for on this figure. I feel like the feet are a little bit big and stiff. They're kind of hard to articulate there. And then I feel like when he doesn't have the jacket on and you're just kind of posing him around, it really reminds me of kind of a finishing moves figure. Like, obviously, it looks better than a finishing moves figure, but I feel like the abdomen separates a little bit too much there. And I love the cloth goods accessory, love the pure championship, and I like that we have a unique Wheeler Yuta, but I am much looking forward to the, the non-blood and guts version, I will say that. But I think this is a great addition to your collection just to expand the collection there. And because, yeah, I mean, there's no telling how long it's going to be till we actually get Wheeler Yuta in our hands. But I think the figure is solid. I think it is solid. And another thing that's funny is he does have a wide range of articulation. I feel like he's tighter than other figures. Like, usually, you know, I don't find that buttery smoothness. He feels a little bit more stiff than the typical AEW Unrivaled figure. But I do like the figure, you know. It's far from my favorite figure. But I can appreciate some of the stuff going on here. But I do enjoy the accessories. Love the jacket. Love the likeness to the character. I think it does look just like Wheeler Yuta. So that's really nice as well. But if you guys are interested in grabbing this figure, go over to Ringside Collectibles. Use code MD Toys to save yourselves 10%. You can go grab this thing. I'm not sure if it's sold out or not, but you can grab it at Ringside Collectibles. Maybe you have to put in a pre-order, or it may actually be in stock. I have not checked up on that, so you guys may want to go over there, see what it's about, but I imagine AEW and Rival 13 should be hitting relatively soon, because they posted images. We got this figure. We got Danhausen. If you guys missed the Danhausen review, definitely go check that out, but I think that is going to wrap up our Wheeler Yuta Blood and Guts action figure review from Ringside Collectibles and AEW Jazzwares, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Before we get out of here, a huge shout-out to our patron members of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate those guys. You guys are the absolute goats. Always appreciate your continued support. If you guys are interested, check the link in the description below. But that is pretty much going to wrap up our Blood and Guts review, man. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>